were located in a rural district of Padmore in Jamaica, in St. Andrew. I am appealing for some help for my school, for the students especially, who is from like a low socioeconomic background, and most of them don't come with books. Some, some um, the shoes and, you know, uniform are tattered. And um, I've decided that, well, why keep money in the bank if I can help so? What I did, I paint over the school and purchase a school bus, which is now down. And I try my best to help these students because they remind me of myself. I, for one, is from no socioeconomic background where it was just my mother alone as a single mother. And I used to walk to school. I didn't even have a uniform. I wore a different color uniform from the school because that's what my mother begged and got. And got. Allowed so you to wear? Wore blue and white. I was wearing a dark purple and white. And I remember that my mom, he was giving me lunch money, so I used to have to dig. I don't know how, how much of your audience is supposed to know about thinking too. Huh. And that's what I used to eat. Wow. For my for my lunch and when I look at these children I'm saying that in nowadays society we have so many persons who are saving and saving mm. and you know, buying all these material things when I believe we must spread we must be like God 'cause when when God came down on earth he he showed us how to live. Right? To care to be for our one another. Keeper. Yes. Absolutely. And I'm appealing to persons now to be their brother's keeper. If you can help one child, to be very good. Because I have children at school who don't have any books at all. Some, some of them have to write on paper. Right? And the observer heard my story and decided that they would write it, write about it. And I'm really grateful to this person for letting me appeal on this larger audience, you know, for help for these students and for help for the school. Some of you may be wondering if the government does subsidize. Yes, they give a little subsidy, but that is really, that really cannot even touch the surface, okay? Um, the school is a small school. It has 83 students now on roll. And we have some registered now to come in September, right? But what happened is that we can't, we want to provide for the children. We want to give them extracurricular activities. We want to be able to have an atmosphere that is conducive to learning, you know, and I am really fighting to have this done. That's why I have used up all my resources. My bank account is here, you know. Just trying to develop an atmosphere that the kids can learn. But right now, the money is done, and I have not done all what I need to do. I have purchased a school bus, but it, it is really a 2,000 school bus, so it starts giving me a lot of trouble. It needs a gearbox. It needs to ensure. So it is there parked now. I started um, carrying the kids with my personal car. And I have to park my car now because it wants shocks and tires and everything. So everywhere I go, you know, it, it is right now, it's like everything is. But I believe in God and I believe that he will help because he knows the desires of my heart that I want to do good. Right. And he knows that the children need help, so I know that he will provide. And, and so I'm you... appealing to anyone out there who can have a little to give back. I'm appealing to you to do give it back. Right. Now, Principal... Uh, yes, um, can, can I call you Keisha? No. Hello, can I call you Keisha? Principal Hale, can I call you Keisha? Huh? May I call you Keisha? Yes, of course. Keisha's okay. my name. Okay. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm from a Jamaican background. And we were always... You are from a Jamaican background. Yes, I absolutely am. Oh, so that is good, yes. whenever you have a 
teacher, especially a principal, it is my grandma would I'm the, hard of hearing you, Miss Pearson. Okay, That's I'm gonna problem. really try and speak into the mic, but I don't wanna make it I'm too hard loud. Of hearing you. I don't want to make it too loud because I'm getting a lot of feedback. You understand? Well, I'm a little better now. Okay, I'm going to have to position myself and then we're going to have feedback. My grandmother would always teach me that we would have to have respect for teachers yes. and especially principals. So that's why I'm asking if I may call you Keisha. Because the proper yes. way to address you would be to say, Principal Hale. <laughs> yes, I know. You, I you, know. You're being very, very modest. Um, I, as I said to the listeners of The Conduit Show earlier on, I came across your story by reading an article in The Observer. And, you know, I want to say kudos to The Observer because had it not been for them, uh, this story and your plight would not have been would brought to be my heard. attention. Yes, so right. And let, let me just say, Principal Hale Keisha is being very, very modest. She um, actually took over this school, uh, I think it was two years ago. It was a failing school and actually was coming under uh, the axe. It was going to be closed. And within the space of two or three years, she has turned this school around, which is a basic school, which um, actually caters to children from, she did tell me the ages, uh, I think it was from five. From, uh, from, from six years old to 12. From six to 12, when the children then go right. on to high school. We want to, la we want to launch an infant center, taking them from five years old this year. Okay, so she has actually single-handedly, uh, with a very, very small staff, because I think this particular school, Padmore Primary School, um, at, the, at the time of the article in, in the Observer, there were only five full-time teachers, an assistant teacher, and a volunteer. And I think there were 83 students in the school. Yes, it's a small school, but that is no reason to close the school because as I want um, Keisha to explain, there are other schools within the vicinity, but not in that exact location. Tell us how the parents are impacted if your school were to close. If the school was to be closed, most of the children who attended, maybe about say 85%, will not go to school because the parents really just can't afford it. The parents are like farmers and like the mothers mostly stay at home or they do like odd jobs maybe, um, you know, just a little washing now and then. So most of the kids, right, they come to school without lunch money, right? So what I would have to do when I get my pay in the, uh, at the end of the month, I have to stock up on certain things uh, that the canteen can use, because what happens is that we don't get the subsidy, like uh, a big subsidy to um, um, for the canteen. So I have to make sure they get a hot meal, because if they don't get a hot meal, at school is the most time the only hot meal that they get. Most of them come to school without food, right? And for me, see, they put their heads on the on the decks, you know, that is hungry, they're hungry, right? So. So um, these are the challenges that we have in, in the learning process. Um, the, 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 the community needs a school, right? And it needs, it needs to stay open. And I've been bending over backwards to make sure that it, it, is, it stays open, right? I have um, done several initiatives, started several projects out of my pocket to make sure that the school stays open. Right, we started a breakfast program, but right now um, it cannot be sustained, right? Because my local pay alone cannot sustain a breakfast program for these kids, right? Um, I start. I got a bus because most of them walk to school. I got a bus. I, I used my saving and, and bought a bus. And as I tell you, the bus is giving plenty problems, a whole heap of problems. And I can't sustain it, so I have to park it. Right, so we have many challenges at Padmore, but all, even, don't care how big the challenges are, I definitely want the school to remain open for the children's sake. Because if the school must close, most of them, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't have a school. And if listeners want, want to go, like on the Facebook page, you can go to Television Jamaica. We have a Facebook page, but you can go to Television Jamaica and put in Padmore Primary, 
and you get you get all the things that has been written and you'll get a match. We did our maiden junior school challenge match this year against Black River Primary and it ended with this both school tied. We lost on sudden death. So the kids are really learning, you know, I'm trying my best to make sure that they get a quality education, but I really need some help. I need some help with nutrition to help them make sure they eat right. I need some help with like um, getting like a play field for them, you know, that they can do extra curricular because we don't have a play field. You know, we have like, you know, a pavement that has been paved from 1972. So when the kids them run on it, they drop and scrape up their needs and all of that. So we need the school ground to be paved, but a lot of potholes are on the school ground. And, you know, and we need help with a nutrition pro project. We need help with books for the children, you know. When the parents buy one hardcover book, I, I, they expect it to last them for the whole term. So sometimes we have to have the kids and write it on paper. So I'm really appealing for some help. If you can, if, if this story lays on your heart, please get in touch with me. You can email me at um, hadmoreprimary at yahoo.com. Once right. again, that and, email. Um, once again, that message on Facebook. Once again, yes, that, that email address is padmoreprimary at yahoo.com. Padmoreprimary at yahoo.com. Now, Principal right. Principal Hale, I'm I'm I know I'm buzzing like crazy here. Um, I um I'm trying to adjust the microphone. Let me see if this one works better. Yeah, maybe that one is a little bit better. Can you hear me? I'm not hearing it properly. All right, let me see. Can you hear me now? Oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me yes, now? Yes, I'm hearing you. All right, this one is a little bit better, but I know I'm really um, very hot. This microphone is very hot. Uh, there's another aspect to your story, and it seems as though you have a, a very big wish list. What I would suggest, I, I went to the Facebook page. What I would suggest is that you create a wish list on that Facebook page, and people can actually see, and then those of us whose pockets are deeper can perhaps take one project or one item and donate. Now, how would people donate if they want to help Padmore? Because, yes, I'm launching a campaign, but I don't want to be the one to collect any funds. I want the funds yes. to go directly right. to the yeah. school. I can, I can give a bank account number where they can donate for the school. Please go ahead. The account number, it's a Scotiabank account number, and it is 32414. Nine two five two. Repeat again. Repeat. The bank account number is a Scotia Bank, Nova Scotia, and it is three two four one four nine two five two. Now, if someone were to make a donation to that bank account, account Principal Hale, um, would they be able to indicate who the funds are coming from or would they need to send you an email simultaneously to tell you that they've sent you funds? I would love if they, they in addition, they send me an email also to see, you know, if you have some person who may want to remain anonymous, but those who don't, you can send me an email to say, yes, I have deposited, whatever, whatever. Um, this year is the school's 75th anniversary and I would love to can. And, you know, call your show and really thank those who did. Um, let me tell you that the Conduit listeners are a very, very generous bunch of listeners. Because and you're going low again, Miss Person. Okay, it's Sharon. Please call me Sharon. Sharon. <laughs> it's, uh, the Conduit listeners are a very, very generous bunch of listeners. Um, they've helped out in appeals that I've given out in the past. And I know, I have every confidence, because I know that God doesn't lay things on people's hearts unless he's already opened the door and he's already made the way. So I know that help is coming for Padmore, um, but I want you to be more specific as to what are the most pressing needs right now. I know there's another element to this story as we approach 7.45, and, and this also goes to the listeners who are logged on and listening in Atlanta. Of course, I'm talking about the folks at Island Blend 
Radio. If you're listening to this story, I'm speaking right now to Principal Keisha Hale, the principal of Padmore Primary School in rural St. Andrew. If you are moved by this story, please go join them. Their Facebook page is Padmore Primary School, or as Principal Hale said, you could reach out to her at Padmore Primary, I think she said school, at yahoo.com. We're actually launching a campaign to get some help for these, these children who desperately need the help. Ms. Pearson? Yes, can you hear me, Principal Hale? Can you hear me, Keisha? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, it's actually Padmore Primary at Yahoo.com. Thank you. Padmore Primary. Right. It's Padmore Primary at Yahoo.com. Or you can send me um, a message on the Facebook page. What's your? Are you um, Padmore Primary School on Facebook? You can also call me. I don't mind giving my personal number. My number is eight seven six four zero one twenty one fifty three. That is my cell number. It's eight seven six four zero one two one five three. Or the school number. It is nine four four forty one thirty two. Thank you so much. Now the other aspect um, to. Ooh. Let me just um, mute her microphone for a second. The other aspect to this um, story is there was another part of the story, uh, the first part of the story, which what is what really pulled me in and made me realize um, the needs that Padmore Primary School had. And, and that is, Principal Hale, you have a teacher um, by the name, of course, I'm talking about... Jo- yes, can you hear me? Yes, you are low again. You are okay. just up and then you are low All again. right. You have a teacher, Joy Smith. Yes. Joy Smith. Yes. Tell me about Joy Smith. Yes. Um, uh, Miss Smith has been in the system for 18 years as a teacher. And um, um, 10 years ago, she was diagnosed with muscular dysgraphia and that um that she is now wheelchair bound. But she still have the passion to teach. She is one of my best teachers in you know, but she's in a wheelchair and she can't move around. And sometimes my heart goes out for that grade four class I have to, you know, write on the board for her and, and, and so forth. She also has bathroom challenges, you know, being in a wheelchair. But um, what, she has a wheelchair that is not motorized, so it limits her movement. So um, what she's appealing for is for a motorized wheelchair, you know, that she can go around and look at the children's books more for more than calling them to her at her desk and so forth. So I would, I'm also appealing on her behalf, you know, if you if persons can donate. Right. Um, a motorized wheelchair for right. her, or, you know, or do you need to a motorized wheelchair. Absolutely. And um, the funds would come to the same school information? Excuse me? Would the funds come through the same Scotia Bank account for that or a separate account? No, it can go to the same account, you know. It can go to the same account. You but, know, as I said, that person just get in touch with me and let me know what, um, what you deposited to. Okay. You know? uh, the that um, motorized wheelchair, I think um, the restrict out is one one thousand two hundred US for the motorized wheelchair. And is it is it purchased in Jamaica for that price? Excuse me. Do you buy it in Jamaica for that price? Would you pay for it? Um, I, I, I'm not sure if it's in Jamaica. Okay, okay. I'm so not sure. I'm not sure, but I know that I, I went, went on to the um, internet yes. to find the prices yes. for the motor I use. Yes, absolutely. So we're talking to Keisha Hale, who's the principal of Padmore Primary School in rural St. Andrew. Um, what's the nearest town? Uh, Keisha, so that people, the conduit listeners, can have an idea of exactly where this school is located. The school is located about um, 15 miles from um, Kingston, Jamaica, up in the rural St. Andrew. 
Right. Which it was built, the school started in 1938. So this year we are celebrating our 75th anniversary, you know. And, and um, do you have any plans to actually um, put in place events to try and raise some funds yourself? Yes, we we try to have like a fish fry, you know, that we'd sell the tickets and but as I say, it wasn't I think I spent more money to organize and buy the stuff for the fish fry than what I got here. Because the, the community most of the persons are unemployed, you know, and you know, as you know that with the recession most people lost their jobs and these these are the things that impact right on these children. Because mother or father not working, it is very hard for them to supply the needs of the children. So as a principal, I'm not only principal, I am the mother for all of the students that come to my school. I can give you a scenario where Payless is in Jamaica, right? And I went to Payless and they had like um, a, um, buy one and you get the next one after. I and I said, okay, then I'm going to buy a shoes and I'm going to pick up a next one because I wanted a low shoes. I wanted one with a little heel and one with a low shoes. And then I remember I said, no, man, what, I'm on when I lined her up for her to see her grace. I noticed that when she's walking, all of her shoes, but I'm seeing, I am seeing uh, the bottom of her foot. And I had to just buy the shoes for her instead of buying it for myself. So I have to take a mother role to the children who come to my school. Because you see the need every day in your face. So that's why I'm saying that I can no longer say I am, I am, I am saving money. Because when I see the need, I have to go for the money and, and use it. I can no longer save money. Uh-huh. Because I can't see the need every day. You see children come, you know, they don't have the money to buy the proper uniform to wear, right? They have, they have, they, they, they don't have bags to put their books in. I can't say I am saving money. I have, to, I have to try to fulfill these needs, but as I say, I alone can't do it. I guess that's why Jesus had 12 disciples huh. and didn't have one. Huh. I alone can't do it. I need some disciples listening on your program to say, look here. I am going to help Padmore Primary today. I'm going to sow back some seed from what God blessed me with. I'm going to sow that seed to reap more blessing best in the future. So persons listening, that's why what I want you to say to yourself today and help my school and help the children who come to my school to be to grow up to be good citizens and grow up to can get jobs and go to university. Things that their parents can't give them, they can get. So that's why I am on the program today, appealing for your help. You it's are listening. Me. Yes, I'm here. I'm listening to your appeal, and, and tears are forming in my eyes because I want to commend you, um, Principal Hales, on your passion and what seems like a thankless task. But I guess God is sending you some help from a very unexpected source because I read your story. Well, actually, I read the story of Joy Smith, who is, a, who is a teacher at your school. And then I just suddenly started seeing all these messages, all these stories about Padmore Primary School in the Jamaica Observer. So I want to say kudos to the Jamaica Observer online for bringing the plight of Padmore. Now, if the guests are listening, uh, anyone who's listening to The Conduit Show may be wondering, why isn't the government helping Padmore Primary? And I'm going to ask this question of Principal Hale. All right. Um, I don't think it is a lack of want to help. You know, I think it's most a lack of um, resources. And, um, like, I can tell you what I get to run that school for a term. I get 77000 from the government to run the school for a term. Out of that money, I have to pay um, the maintenance personnel to clean up, right? That maintenance personnel, she gets approximately 60000 out of that 77000 
to, to maintain, to clean the bathrooms and so forth. I don't have um, no money left to pay a cook. So what the government wanted is that they are saying that they, could, they only could afford one, right, to pay for one. So they wanted the lady who cleaned the toilets and cleaned the school to come and cook also. So I'm telling them, no, that cannot happen, you know. You know, it's not that I'm downgrading or she's dirty. It's just that the lady is there, 18 years. She's still just getting, um, barely getting minimum wage, right? And uh, and she is half blind, you know. And um, I can't let her cook. And she it is it would be really wicked of me to let her clean up and cook. So guess what I have to do? I have to get her cook. And when I get my salary at the end of the month, I pay them out of it. That is how I have to be running the school. You understand? And when the cook is not there, I have to go in there and cook. And when the lady who clean up, maintain the bathrooms, don't come to work, I have to go in there and wash the bathrooms. Like, I can't afford to pay anybody else to do it. So that is how I have to be given to my... I, I am everything. I do everything at the school. I clean bathroom, I cook, I teach. You understand? I have to wear several hats to keep the school running. Right, right. What about? I don't know how long I can do this, what, but I just have to just what about, mind and say, look here, I have to do what I have to do because uh, these are young minds you are molding. Absolutely. We are saying that we are giving students quality education, right? I we want them to become reputable citizens. You understand me? So with all of that, we have to do our best. When I go to my bed at night time, I have no... I, I'll go to my uh, bed Principal and I Cole, think, what Keisha, can I do? Keisha, yes. I, I think my next guest is calling in. So I'm, I'm going to have to terminate this conversation. But guess what? You're going to be a guest again on The Conduit Show. We're going to put the news out there, and hopefully we can get the funds going for you very, very quickly. All right? Yes. So we will talk again. And all I can say is keep doing what you're doing. Help is coming. God bless you. Thank you, Miss Chris, and thank you for having me. And you will be another, you will be a guest again, don't worry. You will be a continued guest on The Conduit Show. God bless you, but I must run now. Okay, then. All right, that was uh, Principal Keisha Hale um, with a very, very harrowing story um, about her students and her school, Padmore Primary School. And I think I was getting a call from my guest, Angela Stewart. So let me just jump from one.